Can you hear me? Number three. Yes. All right, I'm on. Uh, thanks. My name is Gil. I'm from face.com. And thank you, David. We're doing face recognition, a lot of it. And I guess the first thing I want to want to talk about is why is you know why we think it's important. Raise your hand if you have on Facebook or LinkedIn 100 friends. Right. Those of you who are not raising, you're either antisocial or <laughs> deaf. All right. How many of you have over 500 friends on Facebook? All right. All right. Now, if I were to line up all those faces, honestly, would you be able to recall every single name in full? Or would you know that you know this person? You might even know their first name, but it's going to be a lot harder to connect it with a full profile of a person, right? So I have that problem, right? Maybe it's because I'm getting old. But I have 800 friends on Facebook. Thank you. And uh, we do communicate a lot. And I, I do know these people. I've met them at least once. Uh, usually more than that, uh, but it's really hard for me to recall every name. Plus, I'm thinking of a place like this, right? I see a lot of faces, right? And we're here to connect. We have to continuously look at our badges. My badge is over there, by the way. My name's still Gil Hirsch. And, and then when we exchange business cards, it's all about being back home, taking, looking at that business card, and then trying to recall who that person was. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had a face attached to it? It's that important for us, all right? It's how we communicate. It builds trust. You know, I look at you. Lucky for us, this stage has great lighting, so I can see all of you. Uh, if you've ever been on stage where you can't see the crowd, it's, it's scary. It's actually scarier than this. All right, so, so that's why we're fascinated about faces and identity and how you can connect that in a social context. So everything that we do is all about social. I want to I walk you through a, a couple of things that we do and why we do it. So we opened up an API about a year ago. And we support two things that you could do with our face recognition platform. The first thing you could do is called detection. Right? Detection is all about figuring out where a face is in a photo and then having additional information about that face without knowing who they are. This is a very basic capability that us humans uh, possess. Right? I can look at Greg, my wife, and uh, I know that he's a male. You know, I know that uh, I can approximate his age. And he's Caucasian. And you know, he's, I'm trying to say happy, but you're not smiling. There you go. All right. So, so we can figure out a bunch of things. And it, it just comes really easy for us. But if you want to scale it, if you want to do this on a mass scale, you're going to have to, to use technology to automate this. So this is the first family of things that we do. And then the second one is, has to do with identity or recognition, face recognition. Now, as we, as we spoke, it, it's OK. We were used to recognizing face, and we know when it's familiar faces. But it's, 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 again, it's harder to scale on a, social, uh, on a social scale. So if I have 1,000 friends, or I know, I know more than 1,000 people by now, but I can't remember every single name. I, I generally remember. That's it. So I want to walk you through a bunch of, of things that we do, that you could do with the technology and that we've seen very recently. A lot of this is very fresh, by the way. So face detection, again, picking up a face in a photo. Uh, doing this really well is really difficult. What you have today, OpenCV stuff, a lot of open source that can do some of it, OK. But doing this and doing this in real time is actually quite difficult. On to royalty. Um, the information we provide you with is the location of a face in a photo. Some dots on the face so you can figure out where the nose is, the eyes, the mouth. And then orientation. So it's called pitch, yaw, and, and roll. Uh, so you can figure out exactly where the face is in a photo. All you need to do is send us a photo. We come back with the information. It's that simple. All right? If you also notice, there are a couple of other attributes that we add on top, like your gender. So we can figure out, in this case, a beautiful female. And why is this important? So, one of, one of the more predominant uses of just detection that we are, we're seeing is in chat services. So think of all the chat services, the online chat, like Chat Relay. You'll remember what uh, Chat Relay started off from and how it ended up, right? Too many male organs. And, 
And so a great way to circumvent around that is verify that there's a face in a chat service. I mean, chat is all about talking to other people. So let's make sure there's a face there. And you can add moderation on top, and that, that's been one of the predominant uses. So it's a video stream. It's sending off crops to our uh, server, and we verify there's a face there, send it back, and you can also add gender verification and age. But more on to serious stuff. <laughs> this has taken off over the past couple of months like a plague. People have come up with plugins to Chrome, with service, entire services, iPhone apps, that will add a mustache to your face. Now, I've heard there's a, something about Movember. You all know what it is? All right. Thanks to Greg, I know about that one too. So it's you know having mustache for charity reasons, right? Is that it? You can use our technology now to do that without growing the, the real thing uh, and post it on, on Facebook. I'm seeing a lot of friends are sending uh, their photos with a mustache. But as I said, I mean, the, the, the usage for technology is, is anywhere from, from just doing fun stuff like this, another way to verifying there's a face in a photo. So we talked a little bit about moves and expressions and how we can recognize those onto Israeli royalty. You could, we, could, we also provide you with the mood. So you could tell that Bar here is happy and that her lips are parted and that she's smiling. And we're using that information to provide our developers the capabilities to develop a bunch of new stuff now. This just came out. During a hackathon at NYC, a couple of guys from Baltimore came in to spend the night. A hackathon is, by the way, when a bunch of hackers come in together for 24 to 48 hours, sit together in the same room, and hack. They don't go to sleep. They just hack. And at the end of the hackathon, they just present their projects. And it's all about building cool stuff. This was actually a more serious take on what we did. And they scanned the Guardian's 24 hours in photos and sort of gave you an overview of what the mood in the world was on that day. And you could do that with any site that has photos in it. We thought just the branding alone is worth a shot. Emotional breakdown. On to face recognition. Well, that's not royalty, but it's familiar faces. We also provide you the ability to send us a photo and then, along with it, a list of names to look for within that photo. So it, it, it doesn't work, and it, as a lot of people ask me, can I send over a photo and you'll scan the web or all of Facebook or all of Twitter and figure out who that person is? No, we can't, all right? A, technologically, it's, it's just impossible today, but B, why do that? I mean, it's creepy. Instead, you know, it would make sense to search for your friends and photos, for instance, to figure out who to tag, right? So we do come up with, in this case, we, I sent all of my eight-armed friends. Machine came back saying, this is Gilhurst. We're 82% sure. I don't know why it's so low. And then a bunch of other guys that apparently biometrically look a little like me, but the percentages are really low. Some people use, by the way, the, the wrong results to do lookalikes. We have a bunch of sites that are doing just that. One of them is actually doing that for dating purposes. If you believe that you're attracted to, others, to other people that look like you, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. That wasn't my idea. But it's a great one. So one of the uses is that, that we're seeing that's much more predominant with face recognition is, if you'd like, connecting the real world with the online world. And we had this series of summer events with Coca-Cola called Summer Love, or Summer of Love, or whatever. And then they placed, the whole thing was built in three days, by the way. They placed screens where, that you can touch. It's like a, a big, giant like button. And as you touch it, a little camera takes a, a quick photo of your face, looks you up on Facebook, because you have to opt in for this, right? You opt it in, and it looks you up from the, I don't know, there are 100,000 15 to 18-year-olds who sign up for this. We'll look you up, and they'll come back, 
and know who you are and then post a like on your wall. So you don't need to identify yourself. All right, it's just touching it and then we'll place something on your wall. A year before, by the way, they did the same thing with RFIDs, but it was a much smaller crowd and uh, logistically it made sense. 100,000 is just starting not to make sense. It's also very expensive. So this is a much cheaper way. They got it for free anyway. Um, it's, it was just an awesome experiment. Three days from start to finish, including building the thingy. But we love the fun stuff, I admit. So this is an app being developed right now called Terminator Vision. Terminator Vision is about doing the Sarah Connor thing on your friends. You all know Terminator. So this, this creates, this imitates like the whole visual thing that the Terminator sees through his uh, AI and AR and all that. And then it, it just does it on your friends and you can post a photo of your friend being caught on Terminator Vision. Now I want to stop for a second and discuss, well, we've seen Debbie here with a bunch of graphs. I had to come up with my own just to look smart. So a lot of people ask me, how accurate is this? The real answer is there's no single point that I can say. It's not 80%, it's not 85%. It's a graph. In fact, any algorithm, even voice recognition, et cetera, is, is about the ratio between mistakes and good results. And just to give you some intuition, it's, it's the, the, the more results you want to get, the more accuracy you're going to sacrifice. The more accurate you want to be, the less results you're going to get back. And this is where most of the competition between the different companies that do this is focused on. So if you look at the far left of the graph, let me zoom that in for you. All right, the far left of the graph, the zero point, that means zero false positives, zero mistakes. What face.com was able to achieve is, is the orange one at the top. So we're starting at about, I don't know, 50%, 60% higher than the top algorithm that was out there before that, which was also ours. But there are, it's a little crowded there, so I'm saying it got a lot better. All right, and we're about to release that through our API soon. I want to give you some numbers just so you understand the scale of this. So up until right now, and it's growing very quickly, we've had over 32 billion faces detected in photos, and roughly 20 something billion photos. We had over 100 million individual unique people identified. And then we have over 25,000 developers that are using the system right now. And again, it's more than, I think it's four times the amount it was last year. And we're getting more and more and more, it's growing exponentially. People are just harnessing this technology to do a lot of different things, some of which you saw before. Which raises a question of privacy. It was raised here before, I mean, David asked this, right? What about people's privacy? I mean, how do you, how do you approach this? So hey, I mean, we recognize, we acknowledge the fact, from day one, we've acknowledged the fact that this is creepy stuff, all right? We've all seen the movies in Hollywood, Minority Report, that kind of stuff. It's, in, it's engraved in our brains. You know, that stuff is scary. So we care, number one. We actually genuinely care. We're about consumer-focused services and about getting people to connect through faces. Tagging people in photos is not just an act of automating this tedious action. When you tag a person in a photo, you, you want to let them know that you just took a photo of themselves, right? That's how we know. We get the, the message on, on Facebook saying you were tagged in a photo. Or on Twitter, you get mentioned, right? That pops up because we all look at the mentions. And that's important. So get notified and, and share. This is how stuff gets shared. Plus, I think when you look at a photo, to me, if I can tell who the person in the photo is, that photo means a lot more to me, right? I mean, I look at you, I mean, 
I may know you, I may not, but now I know that your name is Christine, right? But just because you have a badge, it's the same thing, you know? It's like people come in here to, to, to connect, and this is one great way to do it. It's just a little old fashioned, that's all. Photos are just a much better, safer way to do it. So, A, we narrow down the context. We never search worldwide. Number two, a lot of it is opt in, and we go back to back with your privacy settings on a social network so you don't have to work twice or think too much about it. And with all the, those photos processed, we never had a single privacy complaint so far. Not a single one. All right? So we're still out there watching our own assets. We have a bunch of hackers usually come in, hack our API to try and, and break through. And we, this is one of the ways we, we try to make sure that it doesn't get abused. On to fun again. All right, so mobile. Mobile is a big thing. It's a big thing because not only has it replaced digital cameras, the old point and shoot ones, where it's replacing them, but it, it added this additional component of instant sharing, right? So it's become this device where you instantly share a moment. You can tweet, you know, you can snap a photo and upload it. Some people refer to this as ego sharing, right? Because you're saying something about you. Now, it's usually, by the way, broken down to three pieces. One is uh, some smart ass comment, right? What are you doing? Something about what are you doing? What are you thinking? Second one is where are you at? And then the third component is who are you doing this with, right? And this last piece is tedious. Getting that to work is hard. So what I, show, uh, what I want to show you is how not only iPhone 4 is now the, 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 hot, the most highly used camera in the world to do this, but what it is that you could do with just a little bit more technology added on top. So we developed this technology. We good? <laughs> All right. This is where I say iPad 2. iPad 2? Switch to iPad 2? All right. Soon, we will be able to see this. So what we built is, is a new technology that runs on iOS for now that is able to track and detect faces in real time, send that over to a new piece of technology we built on Amazon, a real-time face recognition engine, and then return those results. So this is generally how it looks like. Boom, that's it. You see that? All right, now I'm going to take a photo of Greg. I'm going to show you how this works when it's combined in an application. Come on. Welcome, Greg Delman. Thank you. All right, so Greg is a friend of mine, hence my ability. Sorry. Oops. Yeah. All right. And I can snap a photo of Greg. Can you all see this on screen? I can choose, you know, what I'm doing. And let's say I'm drinking with Greg. I can add a filter because we all like filters. And then I'm going to share this on Facebook. That was it. That was it. All right, that's how quickly we think this stuff should be. All right, you want to try this on other people? Deborah, come on. Come on. Yes, you, Deborah. She's not used to being called Deborah. It's Debbie. So she's, we're friends on Facebook as well. And stand up here. Now it's going to show you, sometimes it will show a couple of different names. Can you see Deborah? All right. Can you stand next to Deborah? All right. Now it crashed. See, this is, this is just to prove the point that this is a real live demo. All right. We're still working on this. It's called Click, by the way. And hopefully, we'll be able to send it out um, to the public you know, soon. I don't know when exactly. But again, the reason we're doing these applications is to drive the market you know, and show other people what they can do with this awesome stuff. All right, now, we're at a conference. Think this is a great way to recognize other people at a conference and exchange notes and exchange information. Because I can now click on Deborah's profile. 
and check her out. All right, thank you guys. So there it is, Deborah. Did you know that Deborah is so exciting? I hope that doesn't break the spirit. I mean, she still is a physicist, trust me. All right. So I'm going to share this one as well. And there you go. So back to the slides. All right. With any technology that we do, we're going to provide this as an SDK to developers. This is a little later down the road, but we're developing the app first just to verify the use case and make sure that the technology works and release it, see how people react to it. Um, this is the team behind it, getting ready for Movember. <laughs> so hello from the, the team back in Israel. That's it. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, on Twitter. Thank you.